Hello there. In this video, we're going to introduce a method called the bisection method, which can be used to solve particular algebraic equations and find x-intercepts for particular functions. So just to get a general idea of what we're going to go through <coughs> and write a code for, so let's assume we have some curve and two dimensions, say this curve. Let's assume it's increasing with that loss of generality that has some x-intercept. So what we're going to do is we're going to mandate that we have some interval where it has opposite signs on it. If that's the case, then we're going to chop this interval in half and then consider the value at that point for which we selected and see if it's changed signs compared to the right-hand point and that point there. And then if it is true, then we're going to cut that interval in half and repeat this process until the interval pretty much is so small that the boundaries are equal to the x-intercept. Alright, so what we're going to do for this illustration is we're going to approximate a particular number that you might not know the exact value of. Uh, for example, the square root of 2, which as we know is a solution to the equation x squared minus 2 is equal to 0. So the bisection method is always going to be performing on some function is equal to 0. And we're defining that function in this example to be x squared minus 2. So the solution interval that we're going to be looking on is 0, comma any positive number, uh, say, I don't know, uh, 4. Because we know the square root of 2 must be between the square root of 1 and the square root of 4. So this number definitely has to be between 1 and 2, so you can choose 1 and 2 if you want to. And then we're going to, you know, perform a bisection method on this until this interval converges. All right. So with those things said, let's get to writing some code. So we're going to begin by closing all diagrams in case there are none to reduce cluster and also clear the command console if necessary. So to define functions in uh, MATLAB, so what we're going to do uh, is we're going to define our function. And to do that, we do f is equal to and percent the variable that you are inputting. And then you can do x squared minus 2. So there's two x-intercepts for this function, plus or minus the square root of 2. We're then going to define our interval. Let's do the interval 0 to 2, because we know that it has to be between 1 and 2. I'm just choosing 0 as the left. Uh, why not? So the first thing we need to verify is that this interval uh, definitely has opposite signs. So we're going to test to see if the interval AB is suitable. All right, so we're going to define the product to be equal to FA times F of B. So this is going to evaluate this function here at these points A and B. So if the value of the product is greater than or equal to zero, what would that imply? That implies that they're both positive or they're both negative. So if that is the case, for example, the both positive case, that means uh, we have you know some possible scenario here where it's like positive here and positive here, which does not guarantee that there exists a number in between it. So the intermediate value theorem does not necessarily uh, hold true. So if the product is bigger than or equal to zero, it means that either they're both positive or both negative, then we're going to tell the user that uh, this interval doesn't work. So the values of f of a and f of b are the same sign. Therefore, the intermediate value theorem does not apply. And then we're going to get out of this function that we have is pretty much going to terminate the program. Let's indent that so it looks a little bit more nicer. All right, so if we choose, uh, say, the interval uh, 2 comma 7, uh, let's do 3 comma 7. So we know 3 squared is 9 minus 2 is 7, and 7 squared minus 2 is going to be 47. So this should work. So if we run that, we see the values of f of a and f of b are the same sign, therefore the intermediate value theorem does not apply. And if we go back to our original 
Interval is 0, 2. 0 squared is negative. 0 squared minus 2 is negative. 2 squared minus 2 is going to be positive as well. So this should not return the statement. All right, so now let's write our code for the bisection method. And let's consider the first case, so case one. Let's assume f is increasing on the interval a, b, and it satisfies this previous condition. Uh, case two will be f is decreasing on the interval a, b. And I'm not going to write this case, uh, but I'll leave it to you as an exercise. And just a hint, uh, if f of a or f of x is equal to 0, then negative f of x is equal to 0 as well. So pretty much bases on this theorem. So I'll leave that to you as an exercise if you want to see if you can update the code I will write to be more general. All right, so we want that interval to be really small. So how small do we want it? I'm going to call this value tau. And I'm going to make it uh, really small. So this is going to be represent our accuracy. So my left number is going to be A, and my right number is going to be B. And since we're assuming F is increasing, that means A, F of A is going to be negative, and F of B is going to be positive, since we're assuming it's increasing. We're going to define M to be the average of A and B, so this is the midpoint. And we're also going to consider the measure of that interval, which is going to be the difference between the endpoints, so R minus L, which implicitly is B minus A. Now, what if we run this program, say, several different iterations and it never converges? So we sort of need to keep track of that as well. So let's assume we only want to run this, say, 1,000 iterations, because if it doesn't converge in 1,000 iterations, it probably is not converging. And let's start that counter at zero. So this is the max number of iterations, and this is the initialization initialization of the index counter. All right, so now we are ready to write our code. So I'm going to run a while loop. So first off, our interval is of size two, and we want that interval to pretty much compress down to the point that we have here. So if our point is that gray circle, we want that interval to pretty much be only enclosing that point. In theory, that's not possible, but the endpoint should be approximately equal to that x-intercept if we iterate this long enough. So we want to compare the measure of the interval to our uh, accuracy, which is defined to be equal to tau. So while the measure of the interval is big, or sufficiently big, we're going to run this. So once we enter, we're going to increase our counter by one. And now we're going to look at the midpoint. So if this midpoint, which I'm going to show in green, is uh, above the x-axis, so the f, of, the f of m value is positive, we're going to replace my right boundary with that, and that's going to be the new right boundary. And if we, on the next iteration, if we have a negative value, we're going to replace the left boundary with that midpoint, and we're going to consider continue this process as many times as we can until the interval collapses on our solution. All right, so let's write that up. So if f of m is a positive number, our second case is if f of m is less than zero, and our last case is if f of m is equal to zero, that means we're done because that means it's our solution. All right, so if f of m is greater than zero, then our right boundary is going to be defined to be equal to m. If f of m is negative, our left boundary is going to be equal to m. And if this is the case, then that means it is our solution. So we're going to display to our user, uh, your solution is x is equal to, and then num to string, uh, the value of m. And also, let's display a little bit more precision than MATLAB usually does. And you can do that via the command uh, percent base 10 arithmetic, let's do 8 floating point precision uh, for that. So that is going to be our solution. 
Uh, and since that is our solution, we do not need to continue this loop, and then we can break out of this while loop as well. All right, cool. Now, let us assume this runs and runs and runs. Let's assume that our index is equal to the maximum iterations for which we want to allow. So then we're going to say uh, something equivalent to the following. So the bisection method has not converged in the allowed the num to string. Our max iterations is defined to be equal to n max iterations. And you can put a sad face there if you want, because uh, that means bisection method uh, isn't giving you what you want. Then we can break out of this while loop and be on with our day. So uh, this is our redefinition of our bounds. So now we can update all of our other commands. Uh, for example, the measure of the interval now is going to be r minus l. Because this is the old r minus l, and now we've updated it. Whether r changed or l changed, the measure of that interval should be half of what it's supposed to be. So this is changing by a factor of 2 each time. So if the measure of the interval, again, is less than or equal to tau, then we're going to say, uh, similar to before, our, our solution is this value, m. And if that's the case, then we're going to break out. All right, so that should work. Uh, if everything is written as we designed. So let's uh, give this a try. So let's uh, run this code. The, so the bisection method has not converged in the allowed 1000 iterations. So what is going on here? All right, so if you've noticed, we have not really updated our end value here. So our midpoint is not changing at all. So our M, remember, is the average of, where's my multiplication sign? Oh, there it is. So the average of L and R, because remember, L and R has changed uh, in the previous steps, so therefore we should update our M as well. So let's test this out, and we get, ah, so there is our square root of 2. So let's assume we want to calculate, say, the square root of 3. So how would we go about that? So how can we get the square root of 3? So the square root of 3 is going to be the root of this equation. All right, let's do the cube root of 3. So this is going to give us the cube root of 3. And let's choose the interval. So where is this going to be between? So this is going to be between the numbers. This is going to be between the numbers cube root of 0 and also the cube root of, let's do the cube root of 8, right? Because this is equal to 0, this is equal to 2, uh, and 0 is less than 3 is less than 8. So 0, 2 would be an appropriate interval. So let's make these changes. So let's 0, 2, what did I choose? 8, 2. And let's do the cube root of 3. And let's run this again. So there is going to be an approximation for the cube root of 3. And again, if you want this to be a little bit more precise, then we're going to put more zeros here or increase the number of iterations. And we can also change the number of precision decimals for which we are using. And this can be used to solve any equation or equivalently evaluate some uh, algebraic expressions that we may not know the value of. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you.